From the far reaches of the Milky Way galaxy, it's Retro Nerd Girl with a film review for you. Today I'll be reviewing the movie Snow Queen, released in 2012. Starring Anna Chirokina, Ivan Aklobskin, Galina Tayunia. Directed by Vladin Barb and Maxim Tveznikov. The synopsis is, this is the 2012 adaptation of Hans Christian Andersen's The Snow Queen just prior to Disney's version of Frozen released in 2013. This film is about a young orphan by the name of Gerda meets her long-lost brother Kai but then loses him in the same day to the Snow Queen. She sets out on an adventure with her ferret Luta and a troll by the name of Orm to reunite with Kai. The story. As I mentioned before, the story is adapted from Hans Christian Andersen's The Snow Queen. To be quite honest, it's one of my favorite tales from Hans Christian Andersen. I've always loved the Snow Queen for the ice magic and the adventure, lore, and the mystery of the Queen herself. This film sticks to many of the story essentials from Hans Christian Andersen's tale. There's a Snow Queen that is mostly evil. Gerda goes on an adventure to find Kai. There are magical moments. There is a mirror and there's a happy ending. The changes between the original story and the film were all very exciting additions to me and a delight to watch. Many instances where you expected it to start to follow the original storyline, it veered and it did so well in my opinion. In the transfer of language, however, some of the dialogue is where the film felt a little odd. They mostly figured out the ways to make the story work and the mouth movements match up for most of the time, but in a very creative way, which I can clearly see, but unfortunately it doesn't always make sense naturally. Strangely enough, this version of the Snow Queen is reminiscent of the animated 1995 version where Kai and Gerda are siblings, and in that film, the trolls serve the Queen as well. The pacing. The pacing at an hour and 20 minutes is pretty efficient. Not a lot of fat or bloated moments, but there are times when the film tries to provide comedy, which is the film's most severe detriment. The challenge. The challenge here is the Snow Queen and her cold siege of the land. She is not just a cold-hearted villain though. Her origins began as a magical child by the name of Irma, who was bullied for being different. While in the magical Amada caves, she made a wish to turn her bullies cold, but instead, she turned cold, and as did the rest of the world physically. And from that, she became the Snow Queen. She is a worthy adversary proving that she's a real threat when she actually murders Gerda's parents right in the beginning of the film. This sets the precedence that the Snow Queen is not playing around here and the stakes are high. And it's very well done setting the stage for the Snow Queen's desire to secure the one thing that can destroy her. Gerda's father's magic mirror. The Snow Queen is a delicious, wonderfully developed villain, relishing every moment that she's on screen. Because it turns out that the Snow Queen is a manifestation of Irma's feelings. Seeing herself in the magic mirror reveals who she really is and releases her from the magic of the Amada Caves. I absolutely love the depth that they massaged into the story for her character. The empathy. The main character of the film is Gerda, who is an orphan with a white ferret, Luta, and a mirror with the words Vagard inscribed 
It is the same name of her father who created the mirror. The Snow Queen decides she has to find and kill the guard's offspring that has the power to destroy her. Unfortunately, she only thinks that there's one child to survive for guard, but actually there were two children, both Gerda and Kai, and Gerda is the special one here. As a character, Gerda seems to be a very good-hearted person with a mission to find Kai, as in the original story. Uh, Gerda is not a dynamic character, except to be the vehicle for the audience to experience the adventure. But she's so cute and so adorable, and just a little stubborn. I really like her a lot. <laughs> but what also helps us like Gerda is her relationship with the troll she meets on her journey by the name of Orm. Every once in a while, he takes on the form of a weasel to conceal that he's a troll. Initially, he begins the story and most of the film being a servant of the Snow Queen. His mission was to find Vergard's child and bring him or her to the Snow Queen. After 13 years, he does and he sends Kai to the Queen. But Gerda is the second child on a mission to rescue her brother. So completely by accident, he is playing both sides. You can see his character arc on screen from being a third party to all of this and just going along with what he's told to wanting to protect Gerda and Luta by the end. It is a slow process but we see how their relationship grows. In the beginning of the film, Orm says in passing that he can transform into a bear if he wants. And as the audience, you don't believe him because he's so fearful and untrustworthy. Once near the middle of the story, when the trio are trying to get past some pirates, Gerda says, hey, this would be a great time for you to turn into a bear. And he doesn't, and which is like a funny little joke in the story. And then you, at that point, you kind of figure that he must have been lying, that he can't transform into something like a bear. It was kind of a nice surprise that when he sees Luda in trouble, this finally inspires him to transform into the bear. So then you realize, wow, he's not just a magical creature. In his physical transformation, we see his emotional transformation, wherein as a coward, being a servant to the queen, he's a weasel. And now that he's become courageous, he transforms into a bear. I mean, he's absolutely one of my favorite characters in this story, and it, it, that was a complete surprise to me. The technical aspects. The film was produced by Wizards Animation in Russia and took three years to complete in 2012. The character design is either a hit or miss. Many of the characters with smaller parts are really unattractive and designed with harsh exaggerations. They don't always work on screen, but they make up for it by giving the characters great expressions. The main characters really shine. They have stiff movements at times, but the filmmakers really capture the essence of their personalities. One such is the Snow Queen. She's beautifully designed in my opinion. I loved every moment she was on screen. My only criticism was the unnatural boxy design of her chest. The rest of the work on her was absolutely captivating. Her eyes, her expressions, they were just wonderful. Amazing. I, I love that stuff. Uh, the creature designs were especially incredible and creative. Especially the ice creature designs, really cool stuff there. There were lots of detailed design aspects that I felt had a great touch to the finished product. I thought that the animated world, environments, and the magical elements, effects were incredible. I was expecting a lot less detail, but this was pretty good. There's a storytelling piece of exposition that they decided to use um, and depicted in, in flat animation and I thought that was very well done to denote the past events that has happened 
it was also used at the end as well and I, I enjoyed all of that even though it was flat animation and, and probably not the most sophisticated stuff I I love that I love that stuff I don't know why <laughs> performances I'm sure the performances were not easy to manage because um, we're talking about um, translate stuff into English and then match it up to the the lips sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but really what hurts the film is the dialogue and how much some of it just did not make sense in its placement the best part of the film I really enjoyed how the story wasted no time diving itself into the action just get us right into it right away and um, it, it was it was a really great setup for the story so no matter what happens throughout the middle you still had that really great opening and then another great scene for me was when Gerda walks into the Snow Queen's mirror I thought all of that dramatic action really the events that occurred there I thought it was all fantastic I was I, I, I loved every moment of it the ending um, the ending was uh, really wrapped up pretty quickly and I didn't mind that at all it was a nice little happy ending with a lot of possibility for vast future uh, storytelling I, I liked it a lot it was very simple but really really quick all of a sudden it's like the end <laughs> my wish list uh, I wish they could have simply edited out some of the scenes that didn't work with the dialogue because it would have just enriched the the content a lot even though we, it would have probably lost time and you wouldn't really get a feature film out of it I also wish that the story could have left out some of the adventures from the original such as the pirates and the royal family I think they veer away too far from the plot enjoyment I was really surprised that I really enjoyed this film at all first of all Based on the poster for this film, <laughs> it looks like a very bad CGI Snow Queen adaptation that fell away from the original story written by Hans Christian Andersen, catering to a very, very young audience. Now, it does cater to that audience and it does veer away from the story, but there is a good story in all of this. It has many, many interesting surprises that occur along the way. By the end, I was really stunned at how good it was and how it made me feel. When I researched reviews on this film, I was really surprised to find that so many of them were panning the film and claiming that it was a frozen knockoff simply because it was based on the same source material and was intended for a young audience as well and released a year apart I mean it's not even fair to compare the two one was done with a very small budget and was able to do so much so I dare say that I enjoyed this story a little bit more if we're gonna go into the comparison game I, I did enjoy this story more because not only for sticking more to the original story but I like seeing the Snow Queen as the villain uh, which has always been my favorite part of the fable I just love that character so much and I love, love what they did with her in this film uh, I think that since Disney's film was so popular many people just assume that this film was made in the hopes of banking off Frozen and what the the actual truth is that it had been made a year before Frozen as I mentioned in my in the synopsis of the film don't get me wrong there are some lame posters for the movie mentioning Frozen and I think that was somebody trying to market the film later on to, to piggyback off of frozen success not condoning at all I think it's tacky I think it's wrong and but it it was not the intention of the creation which is what I'm looking at right now and the story is so good in my opinion it's just 
touched me in a place I didn't expect. The original Snow Queen has endured several adaptations in film, television, stage plays, and ballets even. Uh, it, it's especially beloved by many Eastern European countries. It, it's sort of a staple in their fables. I believe that the filmmakers thought that maybe, just maybe, international audiences might enjoy it after the fact. Now, in the video market, it did well internationally, inspiring the production of Snow Queen 2 and Snow Queen 3, both of which I've seen and actually enjoyed. I know it seems so crazy, but I did. And whoever's writing for those movies are really doing a great job. And, uh, you know, look, this is a movie kids will definitely, you know, enjoy. And I won't lie, the production is a mixed bag for more sophisticated audiences because of the animation style and the dubbing. Otherwise, I really liked it for what they did with the Snow Queen and Orm. Those characters had so much depth that they were stuck in my thoughts for a while afterwards and that's the kind of thing I want to feel after I watch a film. My rating is an 8. That sums up my review. I hoped you liked it. This is Retro Nerd Girl signing off. Take care movie lovers. I'm off to my next review.